Welcome back YouTube. I hope you're all doing all right. Let's begin our next challenge, level 23. The prompt for this level is the same as it was for the previous ones. The program is running automatically at regular intervals from Chrome, the time-based job scheduler. And they recommend we look into etc. chrome.d for the configuration and see what command is being executed. There are two important notes. First, this level requires us to create our own shell script. And secondly, the shell script will be removed once executed, so we may want to keep a copy around. Let's head over to the terminal. I have again two terminals for this level to provide more clarity later on. So first, we want to change directory. These are the files that are available to us. Since we want to advance to the Bennett 24 level, the clue will most likely be in this file. So let's read it. Upon reboot, the Bennett 24 user will execute this file in the background and then it will redirect the output to dev null. Now so far, the steps are still the same as the previous levels. Dev null is a place where anything you send to it gets deleted so the clue will most likely be here. Let's read this file. Let's analyze the shell script. So the who am I command will be executed by the Bennett24 user. So it will have the Bennett24 value, which is then stored in the mining variable. They change into this directory, where mining will be replaced by Bennett24. This string gets printed, and then we have a for loop. The star stands for all files. For example, if you want to list all files, you will use it in this way. But if you want to list all the files that begin with a C, we will write it like this. And it will only give us those files. So for every file in whatever this will result, we do the following. If the file is not equal to one dot and the file is not equal to two dots then we print handling file name then the owner variable will have the result of the following command where i gets replaced by the file name again the stat command displays file or file system status they have given it the format option with then a percentage you so the username of the owner of this file will be stored in the owner variable if the owner is bennett 23 then the file gets executed and if the file is taking longer to execute than 60 seconds this timeout command will then stop the file from executing it will exit the if statement we remove the file and that is the end so our goal is to write a script, put it in this directory, where it then gets executed by the Bennett24 user. Let's see if we can read this directory. Where we replace my name by Bennett24. We don't have permissions to read this directory. But if we try the parent directory, then we can see the reason why. So this foo directory is owned by user root and group bandit24. We are bandit23, so we don't belong to any of these, but we belong to the other category. And the other category does not have read permissions. It has write and execute permissions. For our purposes, the write permissions are the most important, because all we need to do is to write a shell file into this directory. So let's begin writing our script. I'll use another terminal to make things more organized. So we first want to create a directory to store our shell file. We use the make directory command. We'll store this under temp where we have the right privileges. And you can name this directory anything we want. I'll name it code with T. Now we want to change into this directory. 
we will use the Vim editor. And then the name of our shell file can be anything we want. I'll just name it file.sh. With the Vim editor, to enter insert mode, we hit the I button. Now, similarly to this shell file we saw, we want to create a shell file. So our first line will be the same. This is what they call a shebang or a hashbang, which indicates that whatever follows will be the interpreter for the rest of the file. Now, because this is a shell file, we'll use the bash interpreter. If it was a Python file, we will need to use a Python interpreter. So our first line will be the following. Next, we want to read the Bandit24 password. The place where the Bandit24 password is stored will be the usual place, under etc. Bandit Pass. Now, because it will be the Bandit24 user that will read this file, it has no problem accessing this file because it has the right permissions. And then we want to store the password that we just read into a file in our directory that we just made. Again, you can name this file anything you want. I'll name it destination.txt. Now to exit and save the file, you want to hit escape to exit insert mode. You want to hit colon, then W to write and Q to quit. And we have the file available to us. But as we can see, nobody has execution privileges for this file. So we'll need to change this because we want the Bandit24 user, which will belong to the other category, to be able to execute this file. Again, we'll use the commot command. We have used this many times before, but the way we'll use it now is a bit different. This will be the way in which we will use it this time. You first specify one of these four characters. U stands for user, G stands for group, O stands for other, and A stands for all. Next, we want to specify if we want to subtract privileges, if we want to add privileges, or if we want to reset privileges. And then lastly, we want to specify which privileges or permissions we want to add, which will be one of the following. Read, write, or execute are the most important and the only ones we need to know for our purposes. So we want to add execution privileges to the other category, which will do like this for our file. And we did it successfully. Now our next step. We need to give others, specifically Bandit24, permissions to write to our directory. Because the Bandit24 user will need those permissions to write to the destination file. There are two possibilities for this. Either we give Bandit24 permissions to write to the entire directory we just created, or we give it permissions to only write to the destination file. Our first option to give permissions to our entire directory goes as follows. Currently, our directory, which is this dot, has no write permissions set for other people. We want to change that. So we add write permissions for the other category for our current directory. Now, alternatively, we can write it like this, but these two mean the same. This was just for completion. And we successfully changed it. Now our second option, to give Bandit24 permissions to only write to the destination file, will go in the following way. We first need to create the destination file ourselves and give it writing permissions. So we will do this with the touch command. 
Note touch has its primary use to change file timestamps. It also has a secondary use, which is if we presented a file argument that does not exist, it is created empty. So basically, we'll use it, the touch command to create an empty file. Now this destination of text need to be the same name as we specified in our file.sh. I won't execute this because I already did the first option and then we will need to change permissions for others again to write to this destination. And this is how we would do that. Again, I won't do this. We did the first option. Now finally, we want to copy over the shell script to where it gets executed by the Bennett 24 user, which is here. The var slash ispool slash Bennett 24 slash foo. Let's see if it got successfully copied. So even if we don't have read permissions to the foo directory, but we have read permissions to a file inside that directory, we can view it if we specify it the right file name. And here we see that we successfully copied our file. Now we need to wait until the seconds hit the next minute for the script to execute and give it our password. So now we can see the file is not here, which would mean it has been removed. So let's see if we have our destination file. We have it available. And so the password should be in that file. We successfully obtained our password. Let's log out and register our completion. To log out, we either type Log out, exit, or hit Ctrl D. We successfully logged in. To register our completion of level 23, we type the reach out command. Apparently, we can't register our completion. Since yesterday, 22nd of February, there were some problems with the reach out command. Apparently, the IP of the war boxes were changed, and hence the reach out command wasn't working. Now, thank you, shout out to Gizmore who solved this for us, and now the reach out command will be working again. We successfully registered our changes. Let's head over to the reach out website to verify. We update. Congratulations on completing level 23. You rock. Thank you for watching this video. Please show your support and hit the like button, subscribe and turn on notifications to keep up to date with our next achievements.